Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dual Access Podcast. Today, I've got a very special guest, Ariel Restituyo from the app Time Save. Now, Ariel's going to tell us all about Time Save, what it is, what his motivations were behind it. But essentially, he believes that life is all about experiences, memories, and relationships. And Time Save helps you build those. Let's get into it. I don't want to give away too much. Thanks for joining me, Ariel. Hey, Andy, thank you for the opportunity. I can't wait to share what Time Save is all about to the world and your community. Great. Yeah. Well, why don't you get right into it? Uh, what was, first off, what was the inception of Time Save? What, uh, what was the problem you were trying to solve? Yeah. So, being in a long term relationship with my partner and coming from a small town in New Jersey, it always felt like there were so many things to do, but uh -huh. I just didn't know where to go to, to do these things. And I've come from a background where I never really had social media like Facebook or Instagram or right, things of that right. nature. So I was just always lost. I didn't know where to go and where to plan. And as the man in a relationship, I felt responsible to make those plans and find them. And <laughs> I just would always have that question. What is there to do? What is there to do? I wish there was a reliable way to find things to do. Not, not Google, not traditional social media. And over time, I just kept asking myself that question, sketching ideas in a notebook until I created a time save. What did you do before time save? So I went to college. I graduated biochemistry, neuroscience minor, um, then got laid off two jobs coming out of college right before the pandemic. And now I'm in my mom's warehouse, uh, full-time business mode. We sell makeup, cosmetics. So I hustle here to to make sure I make money to pay for my dreams. Oh, there you go. Great, great. Well, good for you for trying for trying to chase your dreams. A lot of people are afraid to make that decision does that scare you uh what scares me is regret because actually i'm a person who really thinks ahead and thinks about the choices i'm making now and how it's gonna how i'm gonna think about it in the future for example when i was in college my first four semesters i kept switching my major every semester just not be and the thought behind that was i could finish this easily but i know if i graduate i'm gonna feel like i could have done more i could have done something more challenging until i I wound it up being a biochem major. That was really challenging. And now I have no regrets. And same concept here with time save. I didn't want to wait, wait, and then one day think, man, I should have, I should have tried that dream. So that's why uh, I'm not scared to, you know, take that jump. That's great. That takes a lot of courage to to do that. So uh, good for you. What are some of the competing, some of your competitors? Yeah, I mean, so I'm a very small fish in a pond, but the competitors that I look at as far as being a social media app, are the likes of TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. I know I'm aiming big with those, you know, big sharks in the water, but that, that's why I look as competition because I am creating a social media, but in a new twist. Okay. Yeah. You've got, you've got quite a different niche than, than they have. Yeah. They're all about just getting for, for now, at least it seems like they're just all about getting as many people on there as they can, so they can turn around and sell their information for advertising. But um, I guess that's one of the things about what that people don't realize is when you sign up for these free services, you have to give something up in return. Right. So um, how is time save actually going to make money? Uh, that's a good question. So it all stems down, it all comes down to attention and how much attention uh, an app or anything can garner. So yep. right now we have around 1,200 downloads and less than 100 daily active users. And because of that number and those figures, once I reach, you know, say 10,000 users mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I acquire a little more attention, then I can start trying to monetize through advertisements, through subscription models. Um, token tokenization because my app is built on blockchain uh there's different business models but first it just comes from attention and creating something that people love mm -hmm. and what is the biggest differentiator between yourself and those other products yeah so the biggest differentiation from time save and traditional social media is in my opinion i feel like traditional social media like tiktok facebook instagram youtube is becoming the new TV, the new generation of television, where it's all about entertainment, keeping the user on their app, on their platform for as long as possible, um, you know, taking advantage of their interests and their social dynamics with their friends and social um, status and everything like that. Just trying to keep the user on their app as long as possible. Time save is different because it's about doing what really matters, doing new, new experiences, new activities, 
finding new things to do and doing them in the real world. So it's not about keeping you on the app for as long as possible. It's it's about helping you find something new, going out and doing it and making new memories with the people that matter most to you. I guess from that perspective, then you could even have venues or attractions or things like that become sponsors of, of the app as well. Yeah. Or, you know, in run ads and, and things like that. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the technology behind time safe. So you mentioned blockchain. A lot of people aren't going to know what that means other than, you know, uh, is it some blocks with some chains together? I don't know. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So blockchain is, is, is its own dynamic and its own, you know, section, but yeah. So TimeSafe is built on the Ethereum blockchain. So I'm sure a lot of your view, viewers have heard of Bitcoin, Ethereum, different yeah. blockchain networks. And in, in summary, what a blockchain is, it's basically, think of blockchain as software or a new technology. And it's exactly that, blocks. And these blocks are full of information, lines of information, and they're connected through a chain. So once this block of information is completely filled up, then a new block is created. So in this, so there's a lot of advantages to having blockchain because it's very transparent. So say for example, time save. When a new user account is created, this information is imp imported on this block. So if you create a time save account, it'll be like Andy created a time save account. That's one line on this block. And then I created a time save account. That's another line. And then once that block is completely filled up, then a new block is created. And the good thing about this is that it's transparent. So everyone can see all the blocks in this chain and it's super transparent. And unlike traditional social media that sells people's information, um, blockchain is really good because it encrypts information for the user. So if you create a time save account, you're the only person who has access to your name, your address, your location, things like that. But like you said, for free products like Facebook, Instagram, you, you, your information is being sold is being taken advantage of they know exact a lot of things about you that mm -hmm. just to make your experience a lot better yeah yeah they well they track you around the internet on purpose right they're but they're allowed to by their terms and conditions right so exactly. so in in your business model then if you're not able to kind of resell personal information about people would it really just be a matter of either subscriptions or sponsors yeah so i actually want to um, create a subscription model for businesses actually so okay. because my app isn't about me knowing um, your interests so I could show you relevant videos it's about you finding new things to do and going out and doing it I want to take I want to tackle subscription models for businesses because I feel like there isn't really a reliable subscription model that all businesses use the everyday person uses media like Apple Music Spotify Netflix um, as subscription models, but what do businesses really have as subscription models? Maybe QuickBooks for, for their accounting, but other than that, there isn't really a reliable subscription model for businesses that all businesses need to have to help them, you know, grow and scale. So I think TimeSafe has a unique opportunity and window that we're trying to attack in that direction. What's been your most, uh, the most challenging part of trying to get TimeSafe up and running? Um really creating an app that people love to use and come back to. So the issue that we're encountering now and we're actually redesigning um, is the homepage. So right now, when people open up time save, you'll be presented with a content grid of different experiences all over the world. And as useful as time save is, I don't think that this is the ideal homepage just because you're in the UK. And if you go onto time save right now, what good is seeing experiences in New York and New Jersey to you? Um, and also, if, if you open up Time Save and you see content, what difference is it for, than going to Instagram or Facebook or TikTok where you're presented content, a lot better quality content? So we're actually shifting our focus to ChatGPT. We have a genie inside of Time Save, which is the best feature of Time Save. And it's basically a ChatGPT chat box that helps people find things to do in a new, unique way. So we're actually shifting our focus to that and redesigning the homepage to be that that genie chat box. Well, that would be much more interesting because people can actually have that conversation and, and find out exactly what they want to do. You mentioned that 
uh, in on the time save website it mentions that life is all about um, experiences memories and relationships how does time save align with that philosophy yeah for sure that that is my personal philosophy and that's the backbone behind time save and I just I just really like I said before I really think towards the future and towards the end of my life and and just replaying back all those memories, all those opportunities, all those experiences, and knowing that that's what really matters in life, those memories, those experiences, those relationships, um, not the useless time we spent in front of a screen that, that you don't even remember, but you do remember that trip you took to New York last week, or you, you remember you know the trip that you went there with your family or whoever. Those are the memories that really matter. So time saved, uh, helps create new memories because now you're presented with an app that shows a bunch of different experiences in your area that you most likely didn't know existed that are available to, to you. But it's hard to find those things on different apps like TikTok or Instagram where it's just entertainment, they're influencers, they're just trying to keep you on the page as, as long as possible. I'm trying to get people exposed to new things and to do them. Right, so the idea is you go to this app, you have this conversation, find some things to do, and then you get off the app and go do it, basically, right? You don't, you're not really concerned about keeping people on there. You're more concerned about people getting useful information and, and useful applications of that. On that, in, in that direction, then, do you have any interesting use cases you could share? Any stories people have shared with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one of the best things about having this app is getting messages saying, man, I went on time save and I and I asked the genie to help me plan a whole day and it was awesome. Like uh, I'm never using anything else again. Or they tell me this restaurant that I found on time save is amazing, man, thank you. So getting messages like that is, is uh, really good and inspiring, but it's been a mission. So we've been developing time save for 19 months now. And this entire time I've been trying to create a social media app and now, just within the last week, through Dan Martell's course, now I'm shifting focus from a social media app to a tool. Because ChatGPT, if you're familiar with it, is a tool. It's not a yeah. social media app. And the Genie, which is on time save, um, is essentially a tool to find things to do. So right now, I'm shifting focus from a social media app where you're seeing content and being able to message people and those social aspects that traditional social media have to a personal tool that's within your phone that can help you find things to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. How do you ensure um, safety and privacy of the users? You mentioned how everything's encrypted in blockchain. Any other any other information you can give people to make them feel comfortable about downloading time saving using it? Yeah, so that's the main that's the main privacy component to it is the blockchain technology that's built within time save. So Traditional social media like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of them, those terms and conditions, they give, that's you giving access to, you know, your cookies, your search history. Um, it gets really deep. I mean, TikTok, even TikTok, really embedded in its terms and condition actually has access to your microphone so they can hear what you're saying. Yep. So, and they have trigger words just like, you know, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, you, they have trigger words embedded yep. into your phone that when you say, I like, I hate, I love, I find this funny. TikTok is listening so that it, it can show you these um, uh, interesting videos to, to your interests. But blockchain technology encrypts all information to their users. So any personal information like email, location, um, cookies, history, time save doesn't have any utility for that. So we don't collect that data. And if, even if we did, it's encrypted to you personally. So that's the. Um, benefit of having blockchain technology yeah. reminds me of something that happened last night with us and it's this creepy thing of you know, you think of something and it shows up in your search right so we were talking last night about how we needed to book parking for a holiday we're taking so i go onto the google app the search you know the google search app on your phone and i just type in ne and it automatically brings up newcastle airport parking i'm like that's a bit creepy, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And yeah. yeah, we were one time walking down, my partner and I were walking down the street in London and there was this bike that had like, um, all the spokes were different colors. It was really interesting. Oh, that's an interesting bike. And then like, not even two minutes later, we see something on Instagram of a bike like that. Would never, we didn't even mention that it was a, 
that it was yeah. a, a bike or anything like that. That stuff's like super, super creepy. So it's good to see that you have things built in to make people feel much more comfortable, much more comfortable using the app. Um, it's It seems to be getting more and more invasive these days. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, at this, it's 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 double edged sword because at the end of the day, you you would prefer to see that type of content rather than say I don't know, um, Barbies or other unrelated content, really. But yeah, it's a double edged sword. It is a little invasive and creepy. Yeah, <laughs> and is that the same technology that something like WhatsApp is built on? Because WhatsApp says every all your messages are encrypted. Is that the same concept? No, that's WhatsApp, which is um, owned by Meta now. Yeah. Um, those, those are all traditional programming. So like your Java, your okay. Python. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I, I assumed it was the same because you mentioned the the encrypting of everything. And they say they encrypt everything. Now, whether yeah, people actually trust right. them or not is, is, is another story. What sort of partnerships are you looking to get into with TimeSave? Like if, if I were a company that was that thinks this is a really good idea and I want people to sort of find my uh, my restaurant or my um, my museum that I want people to go to, how do they how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so anyone can get in touch with us at any social media at I TimeSave. Um, but the partnerships that TimeSave is looking to form is basically any and all small businesses and service providers so when people log on to time save and have a conversation with the genie it you know the more small businesses the more service providers we can have in incorporated into time save the better the genie is going to be able to right. recommend these um, small businesses and these service providers so really any and all but first i need to be able to be able to solve that problem finding things to do and then um, start incorporating the businesses little by little once we yeah. actually start making a name for ourselves yeah what sort of new features or extensions are you looking to include let's say what's kind of your near-term feature list look like yeah so that's a great question so right now since we're shifting our focus from a social media app to a tool that helps people only find things to do um we're trying to create that find things to do as a heartbeat and create small little arteries around that heartbeat um, right now we're working on a challenges page as well as a magic planner. So the challenges page is gonna be a unique way to incentivize users to, to actually find things to do and plan it out using the calendar. Uh, so we have a built-in calendar to keep track of all the activities you plan with the genie. We have a magic planner that'll help you plan activities, a whole day, uh, an afternoon break, a dinner, a whole week, whatever time frame you're looking for anywhere in the world. And then we have the challenges to help incentivize people and give them a, a push um, to do different activities, whether that's eating, hiking, um, you know, fun activities, entertainment. So that those are a few features we're working on. Great. And you said people can find Time Save on any of the app stores. And you said it's iTimeSave, correct? So on any social media platform, they can find this at iTimeSave. But actually, TimeSave is only available for iOS at the moment. Okay. Okay. Great. But if you're an iOS user, you know, go on to um, iTimeSave on the App Store and download it and, and give it a go and, and give them feedback as well. I'm sure Ariel would like to hear about how you're using it, what's working, what's not working, and help him help him make, make this great for other company. And especially small businesses, they can really use something like this to to drive engagement of their business where they probably, uh, you know, right now would get crowded out by, you know, the chains or, or whatever it might be. Right. Um, are, are you seeing any small businesses that are starting to leverage it? Yeah. So that's a great question. And actually the last three weeks that, that's been our focus is getting conversations going with small businesses. I've actually gone to small businesses, different restaurants and taking content of their services. And I tell them, Hey, I'm going to do this completely for free the if you if you like to download the app and give me recommend feedback back um i'd appreciate that but i just want to show you what time save is and how it can help your business and they're always hesitant you know another social media app or how is this different from instagram and once i tell them hey look it's hard for your businesses to stand out because you're competing with influencers viral content you know people aren't really getting the opportunity to see you in their feed um, and on time save, you'll be the spotlight. There are no influencers or viral content or funny videos. It's all experiences, things that you can do. So 
I told them, hey, you missed out on Facebook, you missed out on TikTok, Instagram, don't miss out on time save. This yeah, is the there, app for you. you see there you saying? go. Yeah. yeah. What's motivating you to take this journey to change kind of social media forever, right? So uh, again, it's it's kind of social media, it's kind of not, right? You're you're sort of somewhere somewhere in, in in the middle. But what motivated you to to do this in the first place? Yeah, so it was it always came down to being able to find things to do. Um, that's been the biggest motivation for me, and just realizing that that's what really matters in my life, and and I realized that. Um, and also in this journey of creating a social media app. I realized, and from studying tr traditional social media apps and what works well for them, just how negative and bad it is for our generation. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time in human history that you know social media is even a thing. Um, and I just see the consequences from it, from long-term use, all that screen time that just goes to nothing that no one really remembers. It's it's the new age TV, and that's another big motivation for me, just to be that good side that you know, the, the Avengers for social media and try to, you know, really wake people up. Yeah. If people, if you're able to help get people outside, get fresh air, go see things that are not on their phones, that's going to make a world of difference to people's mental health as well. There's so many studies now about the addictions that phone have and how it's hurting people long-term and how it's affecting learning for kids now. And there, there's so many things that it's, that it's, uh, um, uh, problems that it's causing it's nice to see somebody on the good side yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. what are some lessons you've learned along the way man if i could share there's many lessons but <laughs> the biggest one that comes to mind right now is focusing on one single problem and being an excellent solution for that one problem because i am a non-tech founder i built out my team to create this vision that i had mm -hmm. and it started from having the problem or the question of finding things to do. Where can I find things to do? But along the way, it's evolved to finding things to do, planning things to do, and sharing those things to do. And talking with Dan Martell and having these 19 months of not really the conversion and the engagement that I'm looking for for time save and sharing my experience with him, he told me the same thing. I'm sure you have mediocre solutions for all three of those problems, finding things to do, planning things to do, and sharing things to do, instead of having an excellent solution for one problem. And that just got me really thinking, and, and that's why I'm shifting focus towards becoming a tool and just focusing on helping people find things to do and not worrying about planning or sharing. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest lesson that I've learned is that singular focus, because mm -hmm. along the way, you start building out features, thinking it's going to be the difference and this is what's going to make people use time save and man it's it, it just becomes bloated complex instead of focused and just one yeah, focus on that one problem that you that one problem that you can solve that nobody else can yeah, yeah. you met, you mentioned uh dan martell so we're both in his his coaching course um why did you want to work with a coach yeah so my biggest thing was time buying back the time and Coming from New Jersey in my environment, I don't really have a social group or a network of like-minded people who are, you know, chasing a dream, doing small business, entrepreneurs. Um, so first off, I wanted to surround myself with like-minded people who are in different stages of, of the entrepreneur process. That's one. And two, Dan Martell has so much experience in the in the technical landscape and the SaaS community. So I just know all the time that he's put in, he could save me a bunch of time and he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, just him saying that single focus, you know, it, it, it's been such a, you know, uh, a different a difference in, in the way I'm looking at time save. And yeah, man, he just has so much technical experience mm -hmm. that I just bought back so much time just being with him. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it helps you get that focus and, uh, yeah, helps that helps that light bulb go off a lot faster than than otherwise. Yeah, what are what are uh, or who are some of your inspirations in the tech world and why? I hate to sound cliche, but uh, man, I, I love Steve Jobs and and I I just try to study him so much just because. I mean, I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs feel that they're similar to his to him, but Steve Jobs was the marketer. He was the visionary. He was the face of the brand and he wasn't really on the technical side building out Apple or, but he was the marketing genius. He was the speaker. He was the person getting the right people in the right place. He was, 
he was the CEO of Apple, you know, he wasn't building out the app. I mean, the, the technology. So I, I take a lot of inspiration from Steve Jobs being the face, um, getting the right people in the right place. And just that simplicity mindset. Apple is probably the best brand, the biggest brand in the world. I think it's valued at 3 trillion right now. And just his simple mindset has, has transformed how businesses do business. Everyone is trying to be more simple now. And it all stems from the greatest business there is, which is Apple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really really interesting. I'm seeing the same thing now. Everybody's trying to simplify things, and you know, there it went the other way for a long time. Let's like you were saying, you're trying to add. You know, for a while you got a bit distracted by trying to add too many th things into the app, but the more you simplify it and you make it easier for people to use, the more they're going to use it. Right? It's 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 pretty straightforward actually, but it's almost too simple. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the process that that a lot of apps and a lot of tech startups go through they 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 really complicate things and bloat it up and make it more complex instead of trying to solve one little thing and the yeah. message be a lot clearer for for one solution and right now find things to do plan things to do share things to do it's kind of like all right so what do i use the app for versus hey find things to do on time safe right so, right so what's going to be the next thing that you try to do then once you get that problem solved the next thing I'm going to try to do is um, implement um, uh, Google Analytics so I can track exactly how users are interacting with the Genie so mm -hmm. that I can um, get user feedback in that way. And once I create this one solution, this one-stop solution for finding things to do, it's just a matter of, all right, how, how are users using our app? What are they typing in? What are they searching? How can we make it better? So mm -hmm. after we implement the solution, now it's just a matter of right, how are they using it? How can we improve it? Great. Let's go through a couple rapid fire questions. Um, what's the last book you read that had a big impact on you? Yeah, uh, The Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, great book. Great book. Why, why did it have an impact on you? It had an impact on me because in one sentence, the smallest change can make the, a big difference in your business and in, in the world, really. And that's the thing with entrepreneurship. If you, the biggest thing in entrepreneurship is not giving up because that one little change, that one little opportunity can change everything. Mm -hmm. So me shifting focus from this social media to a tool could be that change or, you know, whatever it, it ends up being, but just can't give up. Yeah. I've, I've picked up on that a lot in books that I've been reading recently, like Atomic Habits has the same idea. You know, you just want to try to solve small problems and then over, over the long term, it's going to become a, a big solution. I just finished uh, The Diary of the CEO. If you haven't read that yet, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so that has the same, it, it has several stories in there about the same thing, right? You got to stay focused on just getting those small wins along the way and celebrating those, right? I think that's one of the biggest problems is People think, oh, it's just a small win. You know, it doesn't really mean much. But as those accumulate over time, you get that exponential, exponential growth. Yeah. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Uh, that's a great question. Steve Jobs. Um, I would love to ask him how he would envision time save and mm. and how he would go about creating this app and marketing it and building the team out i would love to get his input on that uh, i'd have to say alex hormozy i mean he's been a big influence in the business space and man I, I i just man he he's enlightened me and so many different entrepreneurs and he makes things sound so simple um so i would love to get his experience and his i would ask him the same Great. thing yeah 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 i would ask him the same thing i would ask steve jobs and those are the two business people. I would definitely probably try to talk to maybe Gandhi and go like a little spiritual route for the third yeah. person. Yeah. Or maybe, That's great. yeah. Yeah. Well, Steve Steve Jobs was pretty spiritual as well, not only in his life, but also in the way he created his apps, right? There was sure. this there was this kind of um it uh, cults the the wrong word to use but there was this belief in everything that he did and the people that worked with him all had this belief and it's the same sort of concept I guess. Yeah. So um, with that, uh, remind everybody again where they can get TimeSave. Yeah, so TimeSave is only available on the App Store for iOS, so for iPhones only right now. 
and they can follow us on any social media platform at iTimesave. But on the App Store, it's called Timesave. Great. Well, thank you very much, Ariel. And I look forward to seeing how it goes for you.